We welcome you to Soil Rockin'. Mighty glad you're here. That's the song we sing to our campers as they come by boat to stay for a week at our resident camp. Hello, my name is Carol Measle, and I am the co-founder, along with Eileen Matthews, of the Camp Soil Rockin' Canoe Restoration Team. Soil Rockin' means Sigh of the Pine. Soil Rockin' is owned and operated by the Inland Northwest Council of Campfire in Spokane, Washington. Camp Swale Lockin is located on 300 prime acres and 16 miles of lake frontage on Micah Bay, Lake Coeur d'Alene, and the northern panhandle of Idaho. Swale Lockin was opened in the summer of 1922 as an outing destination for campfire. The first two canoes were 25-foot Old Town War canoes that arrived in 1924. They were brought by rail and then barged to our camp as we are a boat-in camp only. Most of our canoes have a Native American name as is tradition for most of the campfire camps across the United States. The Swayolakan and the Wakanda are still carrying campers across the bay for canoe lunches, afternoon excursions around the bay, and what we call three to five day overnight trips. We found this picture showing counselors actually painting the Tayette, a small canoe that was purchased in 1940. It was four years after it was purchased they decided to paint it. At that time, our canoes were actually left on the beach on the sand when they were not in use. We began the endeavor of canoe restoration in the fall of 2010 when Eileen and I reconnected as counselors at a women's retreat at Camp Swalakan evaluated the canoes on the beach and realized how much repair was really needed. We made a plan to volunteer and restore these canoes at that time. The campfire watchword is Wohilo, which means work, health, and love. Boy, did work come into play for this endeavor. Our initial crew consisted of 12 alumni counselors, two previous camp directors of Swayalakan, and one brave husband. Although the next year our crew consisted just of my, Eileen Matthews and myself, we were not deterred from our mission to restore all 21 of our beloved canoes. After a two-week intensive training camp of restoring canoes, the others quickly realized how much work it was to restore just one canoe. We spend anywhere from 600 to 1400 hours per canoe, depending on the damage. Our crew dwindled to the two of us with occasional helpers. Five years later, Marge Sweetie joined our team. Next came Diane Melmo. Mike Travis started taking a canoe home every year to his house so he could work on it during the winter months. We now have perfect crew of five dedicated workers. After extensive research, Eileen found Jeannie Borkwin, Peter Pestalozzi, experts in canoe restoration. We ended up hiring them to come and teach us the basics in September of 2011. I picked them up from the train station in Spokane with all of their tools and our adventure started. We designed brochures, sent out invitations to our fellow alumni counselors from the 1960s and 1970s to adopt a canoe. You could adopt a war canoe for $1,500 or a small canoe for $1,000. This donation paid for the materials to restore each canoe. Within two months, we raised over $32,000. These were just estimates, of course, the cost varied depending on the damage. There were way too many tools that were way too heavy to put on a plane, so they came by rail. Can't believe how much we had to pack out to our camp. Our first task was to convert an old storage shed at camp into our current canoe shed. With help from family and friends, we cleaned the shed out, recycled the materials inside, put walls up, lights, and even a new sink. Finally came move-in day, thanks to family with lots of muscle. On the back wall, we put up the names of each of our canoes as inspiration. We finished in record time and have since put up three 20-foot canopies in the driveway to house the canoes outside that we work on each week from May through September. Phew, now the work begins. Not too bad for a crew of old gray hairs. Old Town has inscribed a build order number on the inner keel at the end of each of their canoes for identification. You can access the original build order from them to see when they were made, what kind of wood was used, etc. We retrieved the serial numbers of each of our Old Town canoes. 
not always an easy task. We were able to purchase basic tools and materials needed to begin our restoration process from all of our donations. The next step was to remove gunnel, keel, and any hardware so we could sink the canoe to be able to strip the canvas off in the restoration process. Each canoe was washed on the inside and then sunk on a swimming area for two to three days using concrete blocks inside to hold them down. Small canoes were pretty easy. War canoes, not as easy. We rolled the canoe onto the beach, placed it up on sawhorses so we could begin stripping the canvas off. We just peel and strip and peel and strip. Some pieces come off in longer strips than others. A few had been fiberglassed over the canvas in previous years, which provided another challenge. We ended up using foil and irons to soften and remove the canvas. Some canvas came off easily. Others took a thin layer of planking off with the canvas. Three other layers of paint were discovered underneath. One of our war canoes had been restored at some point, and they used a substance like mastic to attach the canvas to the canoe. No Google back then to see how it was really supposed to be done. We used the same technique of foil over the goo and lots of ironing to scrape it off. And so began the removal of the varnish stage and lots of scraping. Lots of sanding, mostly by hand, but a couple times we used some power tools. And vacuum and sand, and vacuum and sand. And more sanding. We even got our seven-year-old bluebird campers involved. Now to assess the real damage, Jeannie determined that storing our canoes on our sloped beaches upside down was what was causing our damage. All the water was resting in the bow, rotted a lot of our deck supports, decks, and inner stems. We were so proud of our motto, our canoes only touch air and water, not realizing how much damage we were doing. Rotted deck supports. More rotted deck supports. Rotted plywood decks, which had been repaired some years ago. On to moving the canoe back up the, to the canoe shed to remove broken and cracked ribs. Jeannie taught us how to soak and bend ribs. We wrapped the new ribs in towels, poured boiling water over them, and put them in large black plastic garbage bags to soak. After soaking, we bent each rib and then fit the rib on the back of the canoe and clamped for proper shaping. When the rib was dry, we put the rib in its original place and clamped. We tacked the rib in place from the outside, and then the clenching began. A lot of tacks go into clenching and tacking one rib. We use a nail set, hammer, and a clenching iron to help with the clenching. Now we reclench the entire canoe. Now Jeannie showed us how much stem we needed to cut off so we could replace it with new stem tips. Next, the rotted rib tips were replaced, new stems were bent and fitted if needed, and deck supports replaced. Some decks were made of plywood and needed to be totally replaced. Some needed new decks, supports, stems, and rib tips. Now more sanding and more fitting. A lot of planking was damaged when canvas was pulled off and broken ribs replaced. Some canoes had a little and several were completely replanked. We measured and cut out new pieces to fit. Tack in place and clench again. Two of our war canoes had to be totally replanked. After getting the canoe wet, we ironed out the blossoms from hammering the tacks and more sanding. Next, the whole canoe was fared using long strips of sandpaper so the ridges between the planks would be nice and smooth. Boiled linseed oil was applied for extra protection. Of course we had to autograph where we put the new planking pieces on. Peter showed us how to make a new steam box for bending gunnels and stems. We now use a new method using PVC pipe and boiling water. Next was the more difficult process of fitting gunnels. We never seemed to have enough clamps, especially for a 25-foot canoe. Now for the fun part, canvassing. We put heavy-duty eye bolts in our dining hall walls long enough to fit a 25-foot canoe between. We attached our come-alongs to our homemade-type clothespin clamp to each end. Then we stretch 
and stretch and stretch. Carpet pullers were used to wrap and pull the canvas down underneath so it could be tacked. Carpet pullers were used to wrap and pull the canvas down for a nice tight fit. We did a little tacking of the canvas to the canoe, then we could actually cut off the excess fabric where the curve was. Two tacks at the end of each rib. The ends are folded over and sealed. We removed the stretchers, cut and tacked for a nice finish. Now we get to use a butane torch to burn off the canvas fuzz. The filler is applied in three coats. Each coat is rubbed in with canvas mitts. Back up the hill and we're ready to paint. We need a lot of light and a lot of space to paint a war canoe. Some first coats look pretty sparse. One coat down, so many more to go. Here's Mike and Fred putting a final coat on the Kuktu, a small canoe that Mike took to his home to work on. Some took five coats. We hand mix two colors to get a two-tone effect on our small echo canoe. Here's our two-tone effect. Yellow was the hardest, needing eight coats of paint. Five coats of varnish or more for the inside. Replace the keel on the war canoes and then we splice on the outer stems. Lots of tricks to keep the stem band shape while it's drying. New seats are made or old ones repaired and they also get five coats of varnish. We replace the original caning with paracord and they're ready to put in. We try to design decals to match the name of each canoe and we apply borders to some also. Now we're ready to launch. Before and after photos. Here's some of our canoes on the beach before. Wasn't it a beautiful sight? The Kaladi slash Wakanda before. These two wars were painted in the 80s at the same time and they got the names mixed up when they finished. We found the mistake from the build orders. The Wakanda is finished July of 2021. Pictures to follow. The Qantas, the first war canoe we began to work on with Jeannie. Before. The Kiwanis, after. The Tai, before, which means chief. The Tai, after, with Eileen's pup, Taz. The Echo, Thompson Ranger, before. The Echo, after. The Kink, the Kink C before. This was the one that had three other colors of paint underneath. The Kanksi after. This is the canoe that Eileen adopted. Kanksi means bumblebee. The Wakatawani before. The Wakatawani with the plywood deck. The Wakatawani after. Wakatawani means strive to succeed. The phantom before. We mixed a pearl sparkle finish. Mixed it in with Verathane to make it gleam in the sun. The Phantom After. The Wanagi was painted a lime green before picture. Wanagi Inside After. The Wanagi After. Wanagi means shadow spirit. The forest took it out for its maiden voyage after being restored. The Kuktu Before. The Kuktu After. Lorinda, Mike's wife, adopted the canoe meaning dragonfly. She is in the bow. The Wasumi. This canoe is up at Kettle River Canoes in British Columbia, being restored by Mike Elliott for his new book coming out this fall called This Old Fancy Canoe. Hopefully when the borders reopen, we will be able to have it back at camp. It is our prime Willits canoe only counselors can use. He also has our 1967 Old Town Octa 18-foot canoe that he is restoring for his book. It is a sailing canoe. We were lucky enough to host the Northwest Chapter of Wooden Canoe Heritage Association in 2015 for a few days out at Camp Swailakan. They paddled their own canoes across the lake, slept on our clover patch field. They provided much needed expertise as well as some great camaraderie and inspiration. They donated time and money to our tool fund also. To date, we have six out of seven more canoes finished. We have four small canoes done and have either purchased or had three other small canoes donated that don't need any other work. Our last war canoe, the Swale Lachen, will be finished by July 1st, 2022, 
for our 100th birthday celebration out at Camp Swalakin. Though our canoe crew is now only made up of five dedicated people, we are mighty and we pledge to get these canoes done. With the help of Mike Travis and Marge Sweetie, who take home a canoe every winter and work from his garage until spring, we are making great progress on our canoes. Diane Malmo keeps supplies coming and tracks the hours we have spent on each canoe and spends nearly every week at the canoe shed, restoring from May to September, along with Eileen and I. We are so grateful for all who have shown their support in hours and donations. Whoever thought this silly dream of ours would come to fruition? We can visualize these canoes being used for another 100 years. Although at times it's been a struggle, this truly has been a work of love and friendship for some pretty old gals and a guy. We hope we have inspired others to start their own restoration progress. Wohilo.